In this video, we're going to go through how you can visualize your GeoJSON as map visuals within your Power BI reports using the icon map custom visual. We're going to go through how you can use and customize your icon maps, as well as how you can create or connect to your own data. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you've ever browsed the data visualizations gallery out of the box within the Power BI desktop, you'll know that there are many different ways that you can visualize maps and there are lots to choose from actually. So you will have these options like the, the map, the field map, Azure map, the ArcGIS map for Power BI, or even shape map. And I had a scenario at work recently where I had to visualize maps. Now the requirement was to create a custom field map to visualize in Power BI. This means that within this field map, I would need to define my own borders or at least define for me and then visualize them into or on top of a geographical map. The first solution that came into mind was using the shape map visual, which is something that I covered recently, and this would be the perfect solution for this requirement. However, when I started working on it and applied it to my reports, I realized that it only visualizes the shapes of those geographical locations, but not putting the maps on top of this or behind the shapes. So basically, because these areas or polygons are not the standard shapes of a map, it's very difficult to understand or even see where you are in the world if you zoom into any of these areas. So I needed to find a solution or find a way to visualize these custom shapes as well as put the base map underneath it so that when you look at these polygons, they are overlaid on top of a map. And this is basically where the icon map saved my day, essentially. This is a custom visual that you can find on App Source, and it has a lot of different features. One of them fits my specific needs. So we're going to go through and explore this GeoJSON option in the icon map visual. So to find the icon map visual, you will need to import it from the App Source, or you can go to iconmap.com websites to download the custom visual there. But from the Power BI desktop here, you can go to more visuals, click from App Source and look for icon map, which you will find here by James Dales. So from here, you will find a few options. You can just click the add button, which will allow you to use the custom visual or a more interesting one would be to download a sample, which will just download a PBX version that you can use and see how the kind of map works or how does it work in action. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit add just to add this custom visual here in our empty report, which actually doesn't even have any data yet. But what I've done already in the background is downloaded the sample just so that I can show you how the icon map visual sort of works. So this is the icon map sample reports that I downloaded from the app source. And as you can see, there are a bunch of other different overlays that you can do. But for today, we're going to focus specifically on the GeoJSON bit of this. And for me, this is pretty interesting because as you can see here, it's not showing us or showing us the different boroughs within the greater London area. And um, as you can see, you will, it, it's giving us the shapes, the polygons, so the drawings, which is exactly what I needed. But what's more interesting is under the background layers, you can add street maps into this. So if I select open street map, one of these, here we go. So you, this is exactly what I needed. I needed the ability to be able to overlay those polygon drawings on top of a map, which will be really useful. So how does this work exactly? So these drawings, so these different polygons are drawn using the GeoJSON file, which this custom visual uses. So what is a GeoJSON though? So GeoJSON is basically a JSON format and it's an open type format, which is used to kind of represent locations within a map. So a GeoJSON would contain several things like the, the longitude and latitude of every single area or every single vertex within this polygon. 
which you don't really need to worry so much because the GeoJSON and the icon map already deals with that. It also contains different properties which you can use to bind with your data. They would be typically be like an ID for that area, which you can then use to bind back to the data that you have in the data model. Well, I'll show you how this will work and how you can use it for yourself later. So in this visual, as you can see, this is an example of a map that uses a GeoJSON. There are a few requirements for you to start using GeoJSON with the icon map visual. The first thing is that the GeoJSON needs to be a somewhere online. So it needs to be stored in a web server, either in an Azure blob storage or what I prefer is in GitHub. So first of all, here is the URL for the GeoJSON that is being used in this map. And let's open it just so that you can see exactly what how a GeoJSON looks like. I'm going to paste this here and here it is. So it looks a little bit scary, but don't be. As I mentioned, there's only a few things here to keep in mind. So the coordinates, first of all, so these are what defines the drawing in the map. So where those lines or polygons are being drawn and then the properties of each of these section. So this is the property section for the Barking and Dagenham borough. So it will give you an ID. It will give you the name of the borough, which should correlate with one of these. So this drawing here, this polygon, Barking and Dagenham, is being drawn by this set of coordinates. So you don't really need to understand. Oh, actually, so it's just up to here multi-polygon, because the thing at the top is just for City of London. So you don't really need to know this in more intricate detail. Just know that it contains properties and coordinates to draw the polygon. So this is being stored in a web server somewhere. So we're going to try to do the same thing as well for our purposes. So what I've done is I've got I've taken this file and I've downloaded it somewhere in my local machine. And I'm going to show you of the first few things that you can use to kind of explore and customize or create your own GeoJSON files if you don't have one to begin with. So GeoJSON IO is a pretty good site to use if you wanted to explore or customize your own GeoJSON if you already have one. So here it's giving us a map of the world essentially. On the right hand side, you will have your Geo GeoJSON, which is going to be dynamic here. It's going to be written out for you as you make some drawings or if you make some changes to your properties and then a table view of any features that you might have within these polygons. So first, I'm going to show you how to create your own. So let's go and find a, an area here. And let's say we want to draw a circle here. Here we go. So this circle, as you saw, I created a circle and it's drawn a polygon circle here on top of this map and it's generated a GeoJSON that creates or draws this circle for us, which is this is exactly what you would need for the GeoJSON icon map. On the table itself, there is no properties for this polygon, but if you wanted to add property here to give it an ID, you can do so from here. So if you just create a new column here, we'll just give this one ID, global ID. And then for this one, we're gonna, just going to call this London. Or if it's an ID, it will need to be a unique ID, right? So it can be 00001, something like this. So as you can see, when I click on it, it will just give me that property for this. And then at the very bottom here, or maybe at the very top, you will see that there will be some new properties related to this polygon, which will just be the properties in the table that we've just created. And then from here, if you want to add some more polygons, you can create some more. You can create another one here. Just call this one Birmingham. So if you click on it, just give this one zero 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 two so that will be the property for that as you can see it added a new global id on it and if you're happy with this you can simply just save it as a geojson file and you can work with this as you know as a geojson file in your icon map if you wanted to use this you can also use this as a means to explore geojson file that you already have so for example, here we have the London file, the GeoJSON file that I downloaded from the, the sample file. I'll just drag this into the geojson.io. And here, as you can see, it has the drawing of the polygons that 
um, we want to visualize. As you can see, if I click on any of these, it will give me some properties here, which uh, lets you kind of explore them. You can see all of the properties in a table type format here, which is actually really handy. And what's even interesting, at least for me, is the ability for you to customize these yourself. So if you wanted to rename something or you wanted to delete certain columns or properties, you can do it and resave your GeoJSON without having to go and manually edit this yourself within the GeoJSON file. So again, you can make those changes, hit save as a GeoJSON file, and you're good to go. Another helpful site that you might want to think about using is the this one called mapshaper.org, which is a site that I used to reduce the number of polygons that I had in some of the GeoJSON files that I received. So because these polygons are, are drawn into a map, the number of vertices and the number of coordinates might be too many. So I've had instances where I received a GeoJSON file that is over 100 megabytes worth, which is a lot of polygon data. If you try to use that in Power BI, your report will most likely be slow. So you want to see if you can perhaps simplify the geometry and you can do that here in MapShaper. So I'm just going to import the London file that I've just that we were just previewing earlier. And not showing me the values here, but it's it's meant to have like a few different drawings here. The option that you will need to be looking for is this option on the top right called simplify. And you can just choose. I just chose the default method here. And if you notice this this value here, so this is one of the borrowers as I reduce the percentage here, the simpler the geometry becomes now. You will just need to make sure that your geometry doesn't become too simple. But at the same time, it gives you a rough detail of what you need. However, if you need to be more specific, then you probably don't want to simplify it. However, if you want to have a better kind of user experience within your Power BI reports, you want to just make sure that your geometries are sort of optimized. So now that we have our GeoJSON, the London file GeoJSON in our uh, local machine, we need to host it somewhere first. So the easiest way that I found for you to host your GeoJSON files in a web server is by using GitHub. So GitHub is a website that we typically use for DevOps for backing up work or collaborating with other developers. But in this case, we can use it to store and host our GeoJSON in a web server online. So what I'm going to do, I'm here in my GitHub account. I'm just going to create a new repository here. I'm just going to call this GeoJSON. And I'm just going to keep it private, keep everything as it is, create a repo. From here, we're going to go to upload an existing file. We're going to choose your files here and look for the London GeoJSON file. First commit. This will just let us upload the GeoJSON file within, within GitHub. So here now we have the JSON file in GitHub. So it will give you, it will try to give you a preview of the GeoJSON file because it's recognized that you've uploaded a map file here. So you can see it's giving us a preview of those borders of the, the maps. Now from here, you can just simply hit uh, row and it will give you a URL that you can use in the icon maps. So from here, you simply copy the, um, the URL and we're going to go and open it in our empty report here. Finally, we're going to go back here, bring in the icon map part here. And we will need to paste the GeoJSON URL down here. Now, it probably, yeah, as you can see, it doesn't really apply it. And that's because as part of the icon map, you need to add a few more things in the report or in the visual first in order for you to use the GeoJSON part of the icon map. So you need a category and a size as kind of mandatory thing. So let's try to do those things first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import data. So I'm going to get more and I'm going to get a JSON file. And the file that we're looking for is the file that we have just uploaded into GitHub, but the one in our local version. But typically you would have other data to link with your map. So we're just going to use the same GeoJSON file and link it by the properties. 
So here we have in RBI desktop, the different bits like the geometry here, which is what we don't really need. The only things that we would need to visualize would be the property name and perhaps the, the ID, one of these IDs. So I would just take these two and then we'll just call this borrow and this one ID, convert them into text and then hit close and apply. Now here we have imported data from our GeoJSON. What's important with the icon map is the category to match a property that is in your GeoJSON. In this case, it will need to be the ID, right? But it could be anything as long as it can find a match in your properties bit for the GeoJSON so that it knows what to bind into. And then the next thing that is required is the size. Now for the size, it would typically be what you're measuring. So it would be population or could be anything. So for me, I just put whatever there. So just put count of IDs. It doesn't really matter. And let's now that we've added those two things, you should be able to enable the GeoJSON bit here in the icon map, which in turn, there you go. It gives you the polygon that is drawn on top of the map of London. So if you click on one of them, it will focus on that, which you can customize in a lot of different parts here on the right hand side, which there's quite a lot of customization options available to you if you wanted to customize this even further. So let's go through some of the more interesting properties that you can customize. So first of all, you can hide inactive shapes. So that means that as you click on one value or these two, so if you, as you click new values, or if you create a filter by borrow on the right hand side, so if we create that as a filter, it will hide everything else and it will auto zoom in that area. Now, this is exactly what I needed because obviously now that it's zoomed in, it gives you or it gives you a kind of general view of where that location is in a map of a world, which is pretty useful. And if we go back to the properties, there are a few things that you might want to enable, like for example, label. So if you wanted to add the label of the, the boroughs, like the names on top, so like how you saw it on the icon map example, you can just use conditional formatting, which is actually really interesting. You can just get the first borrow, which will just give you the name of the different borrows, customize how it's being shown, the borders, and as well as the formatting. So the fill colors, you can also customize that. So if you wanted to show, for example, the places with the highest population, you can change and control that using conditional formatting, either add a gradient or add the custom formatting option that you want. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create polygons and visualize your GeoJSONs into a map visual in Power BI. Watching as usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.